And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, The Clayton Affair. The day, gray and overcast, matched the mood of the scene on the hill. The old cemetery, high up over the scene, a swirling mist moving in and out among those gathered for the services. The last rites, last respects to be paid by the little crowd of townsfolk who had known and loved Jeff Clayton, killed in the prime of life. The remnants of Jeff Clayton's family were there, too. Mother Clayton, Jim, Jeff's older brother, Lenny, the youngest brother, Cousin Freddie, and of course, Jeff's attractive young widow, Ardith Clayton. She seemed least able to bear up under the ordeal, even was supported by the menfolk until the services were over and they were all back at the house, the stately old Clayton mansion on the hill. Only then could Ardith begin to control her grief. Oh, cut it out, Ardith. It's over. It's all over. He's gone. My brother's gone. Oh, brother. He was my husband, Jim. I loved him so much. Sure, sure they loved each other. Lenny's right. At least half right. I'm sure Jeff loved Ardith. Oh, please. Freddy, it's no use. Stop it. All of you. He's dead. Murdered. Oh, Mother Clayton, please talk to them. They're acting as if, as if it were my fault. No one said that, child. No, nobody said it. I'm sorry, Lenny. Jim, Freddy, Mother Clayton... It... It must be the strain, the funeral. If you don't mind, I'm going upstairs to bed. We don't mind. No, no, we don't mind. Good. Good night, then. Good night. Good night, night. night, Ardith. It's a strain, isn't it, Ardith? The day, the funeral, as you said. But most of all, the Clayton family. They act oddly, as if aligned against you somehow. And you have the feeling of a caged animal. You want out. You want to be free of the house somehow. And that's why you slip out of your upstairs room, down to the garage. A drive in the car would quiet your nerves, wouldn't it? Yes, a drive, alone in the car. (laughs) What? Freddy. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Cousin Freddy. <laughs> uh, too bad, my dear. My dear. Artist. Car won't start, huh? You heard. You know it won't. I'm sorry. No mechanic, however. Suppose your obvious intention of going for a spin is spoiled. Uh, Lenny has the other car. He was all right yesterday afternoon. As I say, my girl, no mechanic. I. Well, someone's tampered with it. They don't want me to go out. They're afraid I won't come back. They... You. Hmm? Oh, no mechanic, indeed. There's grease on your hand. You tampered with this car, Freddy. Really? You're observant, Arda. Most observant. But I did nothing. As I say... I heard you. No mechanic. All right, Freddy, have it your way. (laughs) Good night, Arda. It's a strange, nerve-wracking experience, isn't it, Arthur? The happenings here at Clayton House. 
You've never liked or understood this odd, close-knit family group. You return to the house, go to your room. A few minutes later, you hear footsteps. Footsteps along the upper hall. And then the turn of the key in a lock. Your lock artist. You rush to the door. Try it. To step back terrified with a realization. Locked in. I'm locked in. You wait, nervously wondering and waiting. And then, unable to stand it any longer, you ring for the maid. Then more waiting, pacing, until at last... Yes, Mrs. Tate? Oh, oh, you did come. They they left the key in the lock? Yes, ma'am, but I, I don't understand. Here. Here, do you understand this? Money, but... Don't tell anyone. After a while, I want you to unlock that door and help me get out of this house. But why, Mrs. Clayton? What's the matter? I, I don't understand. You don't that. have to. It doesn't matter. Just remember to come up here sometime after midnight. And don't let anyone see you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You sink into a chair as the maid goes out, locking the door. The waiting is terrifying, isn't it, Artis? But the knowledge that you have someone on your side now, that you've bought some help, a chance for escape, is very reassuring. Finally, much later, you see the latch on the door turning. She's back, isn't she? And you rise quickly and throw a coat over your shoulder. And then... Going somewhere, Artis? Jim Clayton. Uh Uh-huh. Jeff's big brother... His keeper, if you like. What is it? What's going on around this this terrible house? I think it's kind of nice here, Ardeth. Always liked the old family homestead. You've kept me locked in my room. Why, Jim? Why? Sit down, Ardeth. I don't like excitable women. Tell me the truth, Jim. Why are you doing this to me? I said sit down. That's better. Cigarette? No. Then you don't mind if... Uh... Ardeth, your husband, uh, my brother, Jeff, he didn't just die by accident, you know. We've been over all that with the police. Yes, sure, sure. Like they said, he was murdered. I know what the police said. And I know I'm being held captive here in this house, and I want to know why. I'm trying to tell you. This man who killed Jeff was shot and killed by the police, or were you so busy being the grieving widow you haven't heard the details? You know I loved your brother. Do I? Well, let's say I thought you did, once... Only we've been looking into the background of this fellow, Joe Hansen, who killed Jeff. Seems that he had a girlfriend, Ardeth. So? So she was seen with him quite frequently. She shouldn't have been because she was a married woman. Go on. We Claytons have the idea Hansen's girlfriend was married to Jeff. What are you saying? I thought it sounded pretty clear. Do you want that cigarette now? What are you saying, Jim? That you did it, Ardeth. Because you were in love with this fellow, Hanson, and Jeff wouldn't divorce you. You killed Jeff Clayton. I had him killed in the same cold, matter-of-fact way you'd step on a bug. If... if you're so sure of that, why don't you tell the police? Because we're not quite sure. When we are, we'll decide what to do with you, Ardeth. If you're innocent, all right, but if you're guilty... How will you know, Jim? How can you possibly know? You can't keep me here, terrify me into saying things that aren't true? That won't be necessary. Not at all. You see, the fellow that saw you and the boyfriend together so many times, he's on his way here. I I don't understand. You will, when he identifies you as Hanson's girlfriend. Oh? Yes. Oh. Well, sweet dreams, Ardith. Mr. Fletcher will be here tomorrow. Good night. This time I'll take your door key with me. Darling, I am growing old. That could well be the theme song of today's automobiles, what with more than half of the cars now operating being over eight years old. But regardless of how old or how new your car may be, there's a wonderful spring tonic 
to bring out the best in any car of any age. It's Signal Ethel, the premium grade of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline. You say your car lags behind and watches others go by when the traffic signal says go? Then you're not powering your car with Signal Ethel. You say your car complains on hills and pings force you to shift? Then you're not powering your car with Signal Ethel. There's no tonic like this smooth, super-powerful super fuel to put spring into your car and the joy of spring into your driving. And what do you know? It's spring right now. High time for you to try a tank full of Signal Ethel right now. It's a dread, sleepless night for you, isn't it, Artis? Yes, because you know what will happen the moment that witness arrives. Names you as the woman so often seen with your husband's killer. But there's nothing you can do now. Nothing the following morning as Jim opens the door to your room, ushers you downstairs to join the rest of the Claytons in the massive library. They sit around like a silent jury. And then you become conscious of a frightening sound, something just outside the library window. Someone's digging out there, artist. A grave, perhaps? And you wonder if it's to be your grave. And then the digging stops. Shortly after that, Cousin Freddy comes into the room. Well, that's done. Oh, Artis. You should have kept me company out there. None of the others are interested in gardening. Gardening? Preparing a bed for my new bulb, the Bladialis. Oh. You're all terribly quiet. We're waiting for Mr. Fletcher, Freddy. Fletcher? Oh, yes. The one who's to tell us all. Hmm. Oddest, I do hope he's mistaken. I've always had the... Is that you, Lenny? Yes. I brought Mr. Fletcher. We're in the library. Fletcher? Fletcher, I I don't know any Mr. Fletcher. Hold it. The important thing is, does he know you? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Fletcher? How do you do? Well, Mr. Fletcher? Mm. Uh, No... No, this isn't the girl. I'd, I'd know her anywhere, and this isn't the girl. Oh, Jim, she's fainted. I'll get her, Lenny. No, no, leave her alone. Poor thing. The poor, frightened thing. It's over, isn't it, Artis? And you know it even as you sink down on the chaise long and a half faint. You can hear them talking around you, hear them ushering Mr. Fletcher out. A man who could have sealed your death warrant with a few words, but he didn't recognize you. Now you'll be able to get away, go somewhere where they'll never find you, even if they do someday learn the truth about Jeff's death. You rest for about an hour and then go to the garden for a little fresh air. Jim steps up to you. Artis, I, uh... I'm sorry, I guess we gave you a rough time. I know how you must have felt about your brother, but... Well, the part I can't excuse is the fiendishness of all of you. The kind of a family you are. Yes, I know. I... But you see, we're a close-knit family, Ardeth. We were just trying to make you break down and confess. But if you had, we wouldn't have taken the law into our own hands. We'd have turned you over to the police. You never liked me, any of you. Well, you might as well know I've despised you, too. The very name Clayton is something I'm anxious to forget. Now, leave me alone. All right. You look after him, smiling to yourself. Strange, isn't it, Artis? How it's all changed. How you can say anything now and be excused rather than accused. You turn as Jim enters the house and stroll along the gravel path leading down toward the boathouse. You've got to think this out carefully now, don't you? And quickly, too. Decide exactly where to go so they can never find you. And you must get started soon, while the Claytons still believe you innocent. Artis? Artis? What? Oh, Lenny. Oh, Jim said I'd probably find you down here by the seawall. I thought you'd gone to the village with your friend, Mr. Fletcher. I did. Now I'm back, and I want to talk to you. Well, if you've come to apologize. No, I just wanted to chat about Mr. Fletcher. 
What about him? Well, as you know, I met him at the bus stop this morning. Yes. Yes, you drove him out to the house and he failed to recognize me. I know all that. Oh, but Mr. Fletcher did recognize you, Arthur. What? Yes, I showed him a photograph. He identified you as Hanson's girlfriend. Why, that's ridiculous. He was quite positive. But at the house a little while ago, he said... Oh, him. That wasn't Mr. Fletcher. What? Well, not the real Mr. Fletcher. The man you saw was a chap I paid to pose as Mr. Fletcher. I told him it was a sort of a joke. Oh, I see. I thought it best to keep the real Mr. Fletcher undercover for your sake. That was very thoughtful of you, Lenny. But you needn't have bothered. You going to tell me he was mistaken? Of course. I don't think so. This photograph is a very good likeness of the artist. Here, see for yourself. Where'd you get this snapshot? Oh, I've been carrying it around in my wallet. It was taken about six months ago. Listen to me, Lenny. This man Fletcher is wrong. He's mistaken me for someone else. I tell you, I, I didn't know this man, Hanson. I, I, I had nothing to do with Jeff's death. Okay, I, I don't care one way or the other. What? I'm not sorry Jeff's dead. Not sorry at all. There were times when I think I could have killed him myself. Well, I, I knew you didn't get along, but... Get along? I hated him. Why, Lenny? Because I fell in love with you and... And you belong to him. Is... Is that why you did this? About Mr. Fletcher, I mean? That's why. He's mistaken about me, you know. I swear. Okay, so he's mistaken. I told you I don't care one way or the other. You... You do believe me, don't you? Sure, Artis. I believe you. But the rest of the Claytons won't. They'd rather take his word than mine. And if the real Fletcher should happen to talk to them... Oh, don't worry about him. He won't talk to anyone. Cash settlement works wonders. Are you sure? Positive. I've made all the arrangements. <sighs> Jim tells me he's going to leave us. Yes, yes, that's right. I thought I'd visit some friends in San Francisco and perhaps Honolulu. I just want to get away, forget. Sure. You know, I, I've been thinking of getting away from here myself. Go abroad, Travel be sort of fun if we could do it together, don't you think? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, it would. I'm not such bad company, really. Well, of course you're not. Why are you going in the boathouse? Oh, we can talk better in here. Come on. <laughs> you're safe with me. I'm sure I am, then. You do like me, don't you, Artis? You know I do. Enough to marry me? Marry you, Lenny? Yeah, someday soon. Well, I'd like some time to think about it. After all, you're five years younger than I am. Oh, so what? That's happened before. But I understand you're wanting to think about it. Uh, why don't you come down to San Francisco in a few days? We could meet there, talk it over. Let me go with you now, Artis. No, Lenny. I'd rather you didn't. I want time to think. But, Artis... We'll meet Friday. That's only day after tomorrow. Well? No, Artith. I'm as tired of this place as you are. I want to go with you. You're leaving today, aren't you? Yes, but... I'm going with you. Oh, you don't have to decide about marrying me right away, but... Lenny, listen to me a minute. I've got an important appointment in town at 4 o'clock, Artith. But I'll be back in a couple of hours. This 4 o'clock appointment won't take long. I've already packed my traveling bag. Please, Lenny. You'd better do it my way, Artith. It's safer. All right, Lenny. I guess it is. There isn't room in your plans for Lenny, is there, Artis? And you realize you've got to move quickly. Get him out of the way now. All you need is a few hours' head start. As he turns, starts for the door. Your eyes fall on the open tool chest nearby. In a split second, you reach down, pick up a hammer and impulsively throw it at him. Lenny? Lenny? Lenny! He's dead, isn't he, Artis? Yes. In a moment of blind panic, you've killed him. You stand there, staring down at him, unable to move or to think clearly. Finally, you take the key to the boathouse from Lenny's pocket then manage to reach the door. 
You step outside and lock the boathouse door behind you. Put Lenny's key in your purse. I've got to get away. I've got to get away. <laughs> Back at the house in your room, you pack your things quickly, stopping occasionally to glance out the window toward the boathouse several hundred yards away. You're certain no one will go near there the rest of the day, and there's a good chance a couple of days may go by before the body is discovered. You've decided to hide for a few weeks at the home of a girlfriend in Mexico. All you need is a few hours' start. Yes? Jim, may I see you a minute? Come in. Well, so you're really going, huh? I thought I made that quite clear to you before. Well, yes, but I... You wondered if perhaps I might have changed my mind? No. No chance of that. Well, what do you want to see me about? It's Mother. She'd like to talk with you. (laughs) More apologies? Well, if you'll just look in on her right now. Later, if I feel like it. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to finish my packing. All right. Uh, you want me to drive you to the station? Well, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, I'd like you to drive me over to Milldale. I can catch a train there for Seattle. Sure, sure. Just as soon as Freddy comes back with a car, he's still in the village. Well, the convertible's out front. Why can't you take that? Well, Lenny's got the keys, and I don't know where he is. Oh. The last time I saw him, he was with you, walking along the seawall. Yes, but that was quite some time I ago. I could hunt him up if you want. He might be at the boathouse fooling with engines. Oh, no, no, don't bother. I'll, I'll wait till Freddy comes back. A sudden thought occurred to you, didn't it, Artie? And it helps to calm you. Yes, there are only two keys to the boathouse. One of them belongs to Lenny. His key is in your purse. The other key is in Jim's possession and he's going to drive you to Milldale. Now you're almost certain of a 24-hour start before Lenny is found. As you wait, you become more and more confident that you'll get away safely. Finally, you hear the big car stop in front of the house. You pick up your suitcase and hurry downstairs. Can I help with the rest of the luggage, Arthur? No, I'm taking this one suitcase with me. I'll send for the rest of my things later. All right. Uh... Did you stop in and see Mother? No. But, Art, if I... I'd rather not. Okay. You say goodbye to her for me. And to Carla, of course. Sure. And give a big kiss to Cousin Freddy, huh? Oh, yes. By all means. Leaving us, are you? You think you'll be able to bear up under it? Well, it's a shattering blow, but I imagine I'll recover. Uh, Give me the car keys, Freddy. I'm driving Art to the train. Well, I'd be glad to oblige. If you don't mind, I'd rather Jim drove. What's the matter, Art? Afraid I'd practiced more of my psychological warfare? Freddy. Sorry, Jim. Here are the keys. And bon voyage to you, Ardeth. Do drop us a postcard sometime, hmm? Of course. Are you ready, Jim? All right, let's go. A man, they say, is only as old as he feels. But a car's engine, usually, is as old as the motor oil makes it feel. Here's what I mean. Many motor oils break down, causing motors to lose power, become oil eaters, and need expensive overhauls long before they should. That's why if you want to be sure that unnecessary wear isn't shortening your engine's life, you'll be wise to make your spring oil change a change to Signal's amazing new premium motor oil, that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%. Because it's a heavy-duty type oil, new Signal Premium does much more than just lubricate. In addition, it stops acid corrosion and rust, controls harmful engine deposits, keeps oil rings clean and free, keeps hydraulic valve lifters from sticking. And note this, all this extra protection is yours at no increase in price in Signal Premium. No wonder more and more drivers today are getting their oil changed at those friendly, independently operated stations, which feature the famous gasoline that helps you go farther at signal service stations. Why don't you? (laughs) 
You look around for the last time, Art. Clayton Hall, and now you're about to leave it. In another half hour, you'll be aboard the train headed north. But your plan calls for you to get off that train, take a plane headed south. Yes, when Lenny's body is found, they'll be looking for you in Seattle. But you'll be safely across the border into Mexico. Now, as you step forward, and Jim is about to open the front door. Oh. Well, I wonder who this is. Yes? Is this the Clayton residence? Yes, that's right. Well, I'm looking for a Mr. Lenny Clayton. Well, he isn't here at the moment. I'm his brother. Is there anything I can... Possibly. I, I was asked to come here to identify a woman. Your, your brother met me at the bus station, showed me a picture of this lady right here. No. Wait a minute. Who are you? Uh, my name's Fletcher. Amos Fletcher. Fletcher? Just a minute, Ardeth. Let me go. Not till I get to the bottom of this. Look, Mr. Fletcher, you say my brother showed you a photograph of this woman here? Yeah, I, I recognized her right away. She was Joe Hansen's girlfriend. That's not true. Please, lady, I've served the two of you drinks often. Go on, Fletcher. Well, when I told your brother this lady was Hansen's girlfriend, he thanked me and told me he'd bring me $1,000 this afternoon. We made an appointment in town for 4 o'clock. Lenny's 4 o'clock appointment was to pay you? Yes. I waited for half an hour, and when your brother didn't show, I came out here. I see. Well, you'll get your money, Mr. Fletcher. I'll have it for you tomorrow. Are you certain this lady was a friend of Hanson's? Of course. He used to bring her to my cafe two or three times a week. All right, suppose I did know Joe Hanson. That doesn't prove I killed Jeff. No, it doesn't. But I think it will be more than enough to justify the police detaining you for further investigation. I, uh, I think I'll be running along now, Mr. Clayton. I... Hope you don't mind my barging out to your house like this. If if your brother had kept his appointment... That's quite I... all right. Lenny's pretty absent-minded. Probably forgot about it. Last time I saw him, he was walking toward the boathouse with Ardith. Maybe he's still there. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember, regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. When you take a chance to save a moment, you take a chance on that moment's being your last. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Joe Gilbert, Bill Conrad, Ted Osborne, D.J. Thompson, and Gray Stafford. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Steve Hampton, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.